They've really left two dragon riders to guard all of this booty. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Dark Souls 2. Last episode, we did the Pilgrims of the Dark side quest, and I don't want to talk about it. This episode, we're back at Dranglin Castle on our quest to find King Vendrick. Now, we left off at this place talking to Bearheart in a little isolated room. If you go on forward, there's not much you can do. You have an elevator here that you can't pull the lever down for. And then you also have a door here that you cannot open. So our only option is to go up this ladder. I also want to mention that I took the souls I got from Dark Lurker and I went and bought some human effigies because... Yeah, that was a thing. And I bought a bunch more life gems, which I'm going to put on right now. Alright, so going into here, we have another one of these soul-powered stone giants. However, none of these enemies actually are, um, are alive. We got this guy here, but obviously he's stuck in the wall, so he can't come over and help us. So we're going to open up this door and see if we can find something in here. Yep, and there we are. We got two mannequin guys straight from Earth and Peak. Come on, buddy. Right, that should be... Yep, that's good enough. God, I do not miss fighting these things. So what this does is actually power the elevator. You will see the elevator starting to come down. Any second now. There it goes. However, we can't get back up there. If we had a homeward bone, we could just homeward bone back. But then you miss out on like the entire area. And who wants to do that? I love exploring. I especially like not being in the old memory things that you had to do for Dark Lurker. There you get uh, Soul Greatsword. That's the sorcery I think I was talking about either an episode. I think I was talking about last episode when we were fighting Dark Lurker because he used a version of Soul Greatsword on us. It's a really cool sorcery. I really like it. It's, um, it adds a little bit of diversity to caster builds because you have... I mean, it's not like a melee weapon. You can't spam it like an actual sword, but it's just... It's cool. It's one of those spells that you... It's really cool. It's going to do a lot of damage. It's a good sweeping spell. So it's really good for a lot of uh, weaker, like a mob of weaker enemies. Anyway, here we have a chariot. And up there you see we have a knight straight from Hyde's, um, Hyde's castle. And you just see like a whole bunch of throwbacks of different enemies. We had the earthen peak mannequins. We got a chariot. We got a knight. And there's going to be some more goodies um, up ahead. Let's get rid of that chariot, though, because defeating him will unlock the Gower's Ring of Protection. This is probably the most overpowered ring in the game. Let's just go over what it does. So, it has a very limited durability, and it's very heavy. But what happens is this phantom is going to be hugging your back. You will take extreme reduced damage, anything hitting your back. This isn't just to protect you from backstabs. This is literally like a... Here, I'll show you an example right here. I turn my back... You're gonna hit me. See, I turn my back, I took very little damage. However, as you can see, the durability on it is absolute shit. It's a really good ring to use if you're really struggling with a boss. Because what you can do is you can fight it, and then when you need to, um, you need to heal or do something, you can just turn your back to the boss, and you're basically invincible. All right, with that done, we got an Amber Herd. And let's head up over this way. We got Great Sword Guy. We all know how I struggle fighting Great Sword Guy, so we're just going to throw some fireballs. And I actually do remember... <laughs> 
scratch that. I don't remember. Ow! <laughs> oh, I don't remember anything about this place. That is Firestorm. I think we've already gotten a Firestorm, but it's another one if you want to run two of them. I wouldn't recommend running two Firestorms, but I mean, you know. That's our second Amber Heard for the two turds she left in the bed. And up here, this is what I remembered. This mimic ain't getting me. Nope, nope, nope. The fiend now we get a petrified dragon bone and another washing pool. Is that our second? I don't, I think I banked the, uh, yeah, I think I banked the first one, but that's our, oh, maybe we are able to buy it. I don't know. But that's our second washing pool. I'm not going to use them, but you know, it's cool to have. I'm a weapon connoisseur. I like collecting a wide variety of weapons. All right, back outside. And since we're in the rain again, let's pull out our lightning weaponry. So as you can see, we got a lawn knight up there. Is this open? No, I just go through here. So a lawn knight. Um, I'm actually going to switch to my high knight sword. Cause I got to rush this guy because just take a guess. Yep. Oh no, is this this is not gonna be a repeat of this is not gonna be a repeat of boss fight. That did not do as good as I thought it would. Right, let's just get some pokes in. Did the gargoyles in the belfry breathe fire? Were they able to breathe fire at all? I don't remember. This is a gorgeous view. Neat. Okay. Enough sightseeing. Let's head down here now. We gotta open this up. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Let's, um... Oh, jeez. And there's freaking wall spirits. Oh, Lord. Okay. Let's take you out first. You defeated. Let's see if I can... Ugh. Gotta be careful about this. You gotta be really careful about this. I don't wanna... I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with... Oh, see, that guy's smart. Jesus Christ. These things are just so annoying to deal with because you don't want to get close to them. Alright, one down. That one should be easy now. Flame swathing, lingering. God, stop! You're dead now. Goodbye. You messed up. You should have kept on spamming. Should not have been as stressful as it was, but it was. For that, we got. Oh my God, ten flame butterflies. Jeez, and five repair powder. That is a. That is a underrated loot spot right there. And in our chest, we get our Estus Flash Shard. I think I have a Sublime Bone Dust, too. That probably would have helped last episode. Probably would help this episode, too. But, you know, we're just... We're just gonna truck on through. And actually... That brings us back to the beginning. So, I'm going to go back to Majula and use up my Estus Shard and my Sublime Bone Dust. And then we're going to head back and we're going to continue on our path. Alright, and we're back. And I haven't mentioned it yet, but once we get to this area, I'm not sure exactly where it is. You will gain, like, vision 
of all the other bonfires in the game so as you can see we've done pretty well the only one we haven't gotten is one in the forest of the fallen giants and that's actually unobtainable to us right now unless we were to um unless we were to perform some kind of a uh, exploit not exploit but it's you gotta be you gotta be precise but as you see we got the rest of the bonfires in all the other locations yeah i got all of them Except for the ones we haven't been to yet. A lot of these are DLC areas too, so. I'm not even worried about that. So now that the elevator's down, let's ride that bad boy up. And up. And up. And up and up and up and up. I'm actually gonna pop a human effigy. I just hate seeing my zombified skin. Be very careful I don't backstep here because, yeah, as you can imagine, that would not be a uh, that would not be fun. That'd be something very Ricky S to do though. So you come into this room and there's a whole lot going on. We got this dude here just chilling. We got a girl in a cage who won't talk to us. And we got a lot of chests. Can't do anything about the girl in the cage. And I'm not going to mess with a dude that's all chained up. That's his kink. But we're going to get the key of the pa or the key to the king's passage. We're going to get the soul vessel and the fire seed. And we're gonna get strong magic seed, uh, strong magic shield. And with the king's key, now we go down. And now that we got our destination, let's go forward. So this is the shortest area of the game. This is the King's Passage. So as you're going through this area here, you're gonna see these statues. You want to get to them before before they pop up because these guys are strong and they are skilled in the arts of or in, uh, in martial arts so these things will kick the shit out of you is what I'm trying to say they drop some pretty cool armor too if I do recall correctly from my um, my grindings of them Oh god, did I miss that item? I actually completely missed that item. I'm pretty sure it's like a yeah, it's an alluring skull. I just I, I just had a feeling it was an alluring skull. So now that all the enemies are dead, I'm gonna run through Yep. Camera facing like that. Oh, a life gem. Excellent. That's gonna help us. I think there's one more. Yep, over here. For soul of a proud Oh, there's one more. Soul of a proud knight, twinkling titan knight, petrified something. And we got Ashen Knight Boy. We do not want Ashen Knight Boy, but we do want Ben Hart of Jugo. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the spear. So can I get away with not using this? Can you please go away, text box? Okay, cool, I can. Uh, we are going to go for the red eye ring, which, by the way, with this helmet, just it's so edgy. Look how perfect that is. I mean, honestly, the animation kind of looks like shit, but <laughs> but in theory, it's cool. Anyway, let's hop on in. The Looking Glass Knight. Now, this is a pretty cool boss. Back in the Dark Souls 2 heyday, what you were able to do is put your red summon sign down outside of this boss fight. And we get into phase two 
you'll I'll explain more what that uh, red summon sign would do in this area. You want to be careful with him though because he has lightning attack which is influenced by the rain here so he will be doing a little bit more damage. His shield is very annoying. Um, what it does is it's basically just it's like Smo's hammer in Dark Souls 1. If you hit it at all, you're going to do no damage and most likely, yeah, see, my attacks are just going to bounce right off. Now, I have the red eye ring. I'm supposed to be taking aggro, but, you know, I guess he just is so mad about that fake Moonlight Greatsword. Really, the only attacks you got to worry about is that spinning, um, spinning attack. All right, anyway, let's see if I can get him to use his thing before I kill him off. Alright, so here we go. He's gonna drop his shield down. And then what would happen is there's an NPC that's gonna come through the shield. Now, if you put your red summon sign down, there is an opportunity for you to come through the shield and you invade during a boss fight. And trust me, it's about as chaotic as it sounds and I loved it. I remember I used to sit here for hours and just invade people fighting the boss and like I wasn't like a nice invader I was like a dickhead invader that would cast sorceries and miracles and just be an absolute nuisance <sighs> Dark Souls 2 is just such a trolley game anyway with the looking glass knight defeated Still no king Still no king. I do actually want to take a second. And I want to read the Glass Knight's soul. I guess as we can go down this elevator, I can read it. Soul of the Looking Glass Knight who challenges visitors to the Lordless Castle. Long ago, the King's Passage was a route taken by the bravest warriors to prove themselves, but now it only prevents one from pursuing the runaway king. Pretty ominous, the runaway king. What exactly was the king running from, though? All evidence points to something Nashandra did. But why was he running here, though? What made this place so special? Well, we're about to get to my, and this is about to be a fucking hot take and a half we are about to get to my favorite area of the game and anybody who knows what is coming up knows why the fuck is this your favorite area but anyone who knows me personally knows exactly why this is my favorite area welcome to the shrine of Amana. Let's just take a second and listen to the ambiance. And I think we're going to end it there this episode. We finished the entirety of Dranglay Castle for now. We'll come back to it, of course. We have opened the doors to the Shrine of Amana, still looking for our runaway king. Next episode, we explore this beauty of an area, an area that has made many, many soul players throw their controllers, scratch their heads, face palm, and just become overly upset with themselves with how they perform in this area I'm here to tell you I'm probably gonna join that list <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed I'll see y'all next time for more Dark Souls